Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, July 21st, 2022, three, little after 3 p.m. Eastern. All the greatest treasures are hidden behind that which we wouldn't want to be with. Ben Wilson. The mind is full of so many stories about what reality is about, it lives in a sea of beliefs and illusions that it imprints on ourselves and everyone in the universe. And when we look deep into our own mind and what it's telling you, you might see that it's actually fabricating lies about everything. And yes, your mind lies too. It says one thing about yourself or another person in one moment. Then the next week it says the complete opposite, believing that this is now true. The mind is a perpetual swinging pendulum of contradictions. All it can offer you is opposing beliefs and desires. If you are patient and conscious enough, you will notice how these opposing thoughts each come to the surface to be born with eventually and eventually fall away like everything in this universe. The more we become attached to what our mind says is true, the more lost, confused, and miserable we become. The level of suffering we are currently in right now shows us exactly how deeply we are attached to our thoughts. This attachment to thoughts is the mechanics of what problems are. Your problems are a product of dinging to one extreme of the pendulum. We believe we are not worthy, lovable, smart enough, or deserving, and spend the remainder of our lives in unconscious attempts to provide the opposite, to prove the opposite is true. One of the greatest lies the mind has ever told you is that you are a separate human being who is disconnected from everyone else. Many of us try to disprove this deep lie and begin craving a deep, intimate relationship with another human being. Then we can say to ourselves, I am not alone anymore. I am with this person, and they are with me. We are together now. The mind tends to portray this fantasy picture that you are with the other now and no longer alone. It says you are together, connected in unity with another person. The bigger truth is that consciousness itself has no ownership mind is a limited container that cannot find freedom or peace with problems. Only consciousness has the infinite capacity to find real freedom and peace. There is just no way to be in a solid, healthy, long-term relationship without getting into an, an eternal loop of emotional drama and egotistical pain unless this realization is found and lived out. The greatest illusion, however, is that we were never completely separate beings in the first place. Sure, my my physical body is is in a separate space than your physical body, right? 
your 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 physical body is in a separate space than your physical body. Yet this is just scratching the surface. Underneath, we are one consciousness connected to each other. The illusion of being a separate human being is the greatest illusion in humanity that perpetuates all human suffering. The real truth is the bigger truth, which is that there is one self, one God source, hidden behind it all, and you are that. There is an important spiritual reason why there are nearly 8 billion other separate people on the planet. We all need each other to wake up. We are all so deeply asleep and lost in the matrix of our mind buried in our fears of being lonely, that we need every possibility of help. There are many hidden layers to our ego and childhood conditioning, and not just one person is going to be able to dig through these layers to help us find out our secret hiding spaces within. If we want to learn how to transcend feeling lonely, needy, or lacking someone in our lives, we must learn how to surrender to our spiritual self and depend on this deeper heart for deeply eternal love. When we can live in this pure self-loving state, the lost, lonely, and desperate mind simply falls away. The mind automatically falls into an open heart and is immediately dissolved in the peace and energy of this love. When we find a way to open our hearts to feeling life in its raw, real form, we become exposed to a much deeper truth within our relationships. This is where we start to grow and evolve. When we can relax into our vulnerability, share it with others, we can open to that deeper source of love in ourselves. This is the great recipe for creating connection with others. Be vulnerable enough to share your path the pain with others, and love yourself as you share your trauma without getting lost in the story. One of the greatest reasons to work on healing ourselves is so we can stay in a long-term, deep, intimate relationship in life. It may make or take many years for your deepest vulnerability to feel safe enough to rise to the surface and become exposed. Yet when it does, you allow yourself to be penetrated with love on the deepest layers with a loved one who can dive beyond the extraordinary protection mechanisms of the ego. Intimate relationships are a very deep and sacred connection with another soul. It takes tremendous honesty, integrity, vulnerability, and courage to dive deep with another being and create a space safe enough for its roots to grow. Once you discover this place of divine vulnerability, deep eternal love for yourself, the stillness of the mind, then you can find it with your partner, but it must first be found with you. The most radical levels of trust, love, and truth can only be accessed when the heart is open and there is a deep feeling of peace inside. In this space, 
a deeper, sweeter aspect of life is found. We can easily create a divine feeling of connection with others, and this awakens us to our fullest potentiality and power. In this sweet, healthy, open-hearted connection, we let down the walls of armor around our body and are able to merge with the heart of the other. The demand for permanence in every area of our existence is the cause of human misery. The demand for permanence in every area of our existence is the cause of human misery. There is no such thing as permanence at all. Krishnamurti. There is no such thing as permanence at all. One of the great practical secrets I've discovered to transcending the illusion of aloneness is activating the three main centers of the heart belly, and sex center. I refer to these three centers as the body's holy trinity. When the breath is opening up to feeling an energetic thread of connection that is running through the heart, belly, and sex center with each breath, we get grounded in our body, rooted in our power, and capable of to move into creating a healthy, inner, dependent, intimate relationship with another. Once you have aligned in yourself with this holy trinity, feeling the grounded connection of your heart, belly, and sexual energy inside your body, your relationship are guaranteed to blossom. You will see it manifest over the next weeks, months, and years. This sacred trinity, however, must first be rooted within yourself in order to have stable roots to bond with your partner without getting caught in their drama. When both of you and your intimate partner are established in this sacred connection, the Trinity must spread into every single person in your community. This network creates the support that you and your relationship will need to ensure all the many challenges ahead. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. He comes to ego and all the world from Anamarisha. Finding the source of vulnerability, love, stillness in your intimate relationships is very important is it will give birth to a grounded estate or state of self-realization. This self-realization state is what the purpose of life is all about, waking up from our suffering together so we discover our true connection to love. This discovery of the Holy Trinity inside you, grounded within a relationship, allows space for a perfectly balanced, healthy, long-term relationship to grow, evolves, and flourishes for an entire lifetime. Think of your relationship as a practice ground, a sacred space to play with, living in this holy trinity of consciousness. There are many relationships here, One is with your individuated ego itself. With your individuated egoic self. One 
with your beloved. And the final is with the great self. This is another trinity to discover, and the main enlightened stage for the play of consciousness to perform and act out all the various roles. There is no final reaching of the self. There is no final reaching of the self where to be reached if the self were to be reached. It would mean that the self is not there. And now that it is yet to be obtained. What is got afresh will also be lost. Ramana Mauritius. And remember that enlightenment is a process of peeling back the many layers of the ego to experience your true, radiant, infinite self. It is a process of opening your innermost being and as a result to the entire universe reaching toward the center of you you may find a spiritual cyclone. Yet, keep diving beyond that. There is a deep stillness, and then the very essence of your being is where your true spiritual knowledge resides. This is the source of your reality and universe. As you continuously rest deeper into the quiet, peaceful, still center in the heart of your being, you will eventually awaken to the divine being you truly are. The longer you can abide in this center, the faster you'll find yourself manifesting a rich life full of depth, meaning, clarity, love, and abundance with bliss. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we do, choose to do, is relax the body. We are not the body. We are the God, the pure consciousness, the kingdom of God, the source creator in the body. We, ha- we The body houses us so we can experience the body and all the wonderful things that go with it. So we're not the character, the name, the personality. No. We're not the status in line. We are the God, the pure consciousness, the love. So our body, and remember, we all have a little touch or pad of amnesia. And so the body kind of, it, it, it acts as a mop, right? It, it, you, it just absorbs, it's a sponge mop, it absorbs everything from the time we enter these baby bodies all the way through the cycle, right? And a lot of the times we just don't know it. We fall into the habit. Basically, we haven't been molded. See, so when we enter these baby bodies, what? Uh, I mean, we, we have no constraints. We, have, we haven't been molded yet. 
by our parents, you know, uh, by, by uh, relatives, siblings, whatever, um, friends, and so on through life. So we, when we look at things, it's open. There's no contesting anything. When we want to be a cow, we'll be a cow if we want. You know, it, it, we don't know that certain things like hot surfaces or, you know, don't, don't jump down there. You might hurt yourself and that type of thing. We don't know any of that, none of it. We are pristine. Now think about this. You know, the next generation of us, where they're taught from the beginning about who and what they are. Just imagine for a moment what that will do with this civilization. It's very exciting. Now, the body takes on a lot, and some of us know that. We're getting more and more aware of it. The body takes on a lot, and most of us will go through years and years and years and years and years, never thinking really, truly, about any of that with the body. We just keep prodding along, skipping along, some of us, eventually, the body can't hold the stress anymore. And so, biological occurrences, breakdowns happen. And then we get concerned, right? But w- while we're hopping along okay, through this life, we're really not concerned. Not for quite some time, are we? You know, we, we, we have certain habits, we do certain things, and we, that's what we do. We just kind of skip through one. Until the body is just screaming for assistance saying, you got to help me here. And see, we, we don't pay much attention to the subconscious mind, which is the, 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 super, the super recorder from the time we enter the baby body all the way through until we leave the body. That subconscious mind is recording every smidgen of everything. Whatever you do through this life. It records everything. It records everything past lives. It's all there. And see, since we haven't mastered it, it randomly plays that stuff back. And that's why you could be doing anything, anytime, anywhere. And something will just come over and say, you say, I've done this before. This feels very familiar. And you have. May have been this lifetime or others, but you have done it before. There's no, there's really no questioning about it. You know, ego mind will try to convince you otherwise, but it, you have done that before. None of us have only had one lifetime. Many of us have had tens and tens and twenties, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand lifetimes. It's what we do. So it should become aware of the. Uh, the vessel, the, 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 the body that carries our, the God that we are, right? So we tend to it. The more we tend to it, the more aware we become of it. Makes sense, doesn't it? And all the functions, the different, you know, the, 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 when we become more aware of the ego mind and the, and the subconscious mind and, you know, all of these these illusions, these uh, uh, illusions of separation in this life, right? But we learn because we, we review them when we start understanding exactly what are they. What is this thing called the ego mind? Why does it keep me out of the now and always keeping me in the past and the future? 
or yesterday or tomorrow? Why is it so incessantly bent to keep me in suffering? See, we don't ask these questions. We should be. Many are afraid to ask those questions. And then we begin to start unraveling things. And the first thing that we begin to unravel is that we are not the ego mind. We never were. And so by focusing, what, on your breath, easy and slowly in through the nose, easy and slowly out through the mouth, by focusing on the breath, you still the ego mind and the subconscious mind. How does that happen? You leave them alone. You're focused on the breath. You're in the now. You are not, literally, you're not engaging with the ego mind and the subconscious mind, which are all illusions. They're all illusions. So when we do that and we still the mind and we're in the now, things happen. And what are they? You're no longer caught and emotionality in the external reality, the physical material world. You're no longer caught in tomorrow or yesterday. We, we, we each put out over 60,000 thoughts a day, these bodies, right? Then we have tens of millions and billions of thoughts. You might as well call them programs because that's what they really are. They fly by like clouds in the sky with all of us. Now, by focusing on the breath, as much as you can, say, that's the key. Not once in a great while, but as much as you can. So you move yourself into the now and you know it. There's no ego mind. There's no suffering. There's no worry. There's no stress. There's no fear. It's all gone. There's no mind chatter. It doesn't exist in the now. And we focus moment to moment. Some people may say through the, you know, the ego mind says, well, you, you're oblivious. You can't do that. You, you've got to be with me. Why? Why do I need to be with you? You keep me in pain and suffering all the time. You keep me guessing all the time. You keep me doubting myself all the time. You keep me wondering about myself. Why would I need you? And that's the result of you. You wouldn't, would you? So you, you begin, and you will, you will, you will. Once you, through the heart mind, move into the now, and your journey begins within, you will not leave. You'll have no motivation to leave. You look at your comparison, right? And you say to yourself, okay, so I understand that the ego mind the ego, the mind, is an illusion that creates the ego to assist it. It's also an illusion. Now, the ego mind keeps us in tomorrow or yesterday. It does everything it can to keep us into tomorrow or yesterday, past or present, past or future. And this way, we suffer. Expectations, attachments, disappointments, worry, anxiety, fears. All kinds of stuff. Why in the heck would we spend most of our time with the ego mind? That's a question to meditate on and ponder. Why would we do that? Knowing 
knowing, which most don't, but you guys know to a certain extent. Why would we do that when we could focus on the now with our breath and eliminate all of that? I'm not saying you could do it immediately, overnight, although some have. But when you make that decision, you say, that, and then you, as you still everything and you don't interact with it, then you're sitting there saying, that, that's an ego thought, and I'm not interested in entertaining that. So you're not angry, you're not upset, you're not caustic or anything. You're love, and you say, I'm not interested in entertaining, that's an ego thought. Or this is an ego feeling, and I don't care to entertain this ego feeling. So you're operating from the heart mind, not the ego mind. It shifts everything. And the more you do it, the more you will want to stay in the now. It's, com it's just common sense. Oh, no, I'm going to stay with my buddy, the ego mind, and suffer throughout my life, off and on. And that's what people do who embrace the ego mind. They suffer. And I'm saying it's good or bad. Well, I just don't understand why we would do that. You have a blissful life in the heart mind, right? You have a suffering life in the ego mind. Yeah, you sure, you'll have fun times and things like that, but they'll be short-lived, and they'll always have to be more and more and more and more and more and more and more. So through the breath, the body lets go of all of the tension, stress, anxiety, and fear, and worry, Right? And you'll notice it. You'll notice that when you drop into the heart mind from the ego mind, things just aren't. It's hard to describe. They're, you're not in them. They're there, right? But you're not in them. You're not participating with them. You're beyond them. Okay? It's a big difference. They're there. You know it. But you're not in them like you normally would be through the ego mind. They, they, they don't affect you. They don't bother you. They don't irritate you. They don't upset you. They're just there. Now, we all have a great hall, right? And the great hall is our massive reference library. And remember, we've got the subconscious mind recording everything and storing it in the subconscious mind. And this, this place is vast, right? When you walk into a regular room, you, you, you may not know it, but your eyes will, will like, flash. They'll flash the ceiling and the walls and it, it, very briefly. When you enter your great hall, you, you, don't, you don't see ceilings or walls. It, it is so vast. Have you ever been inside a place that's so vast that you can't see the walls or even the ceiling? Now, we all we have three paths. All of us do, right? Most of us take the path of what? Past, future, yesterday, tomorrow. That's where most of us reside. Yesterday, tomorrow. Now we find ourselves in the moment standing in the center path. The coin has three sides. You got heads, tails, and you've got the edge, the center. Now we look at all three of these paths, and we'll notice that the trees have formed a golden canopy over the paths. You know, shimmering golden leaves and branches, and 
and each path has a vibrant emerald green flaming grass. Now we look at all the paths and they're, they look almost identical. The only difference is, is that two of them are worn down. I mean, have been used. And that's yesterday, the past, and tomorrow, the future. Now, the one we're standing in front of, which is the now, it, it looks brand new. Now, we understand why this is. Because the ego mind seduces us on a continual basis to stay with it. See, it needs that attention. It's so insecure. So it wants us to be in, in yesterday or tomorrow all the time. All, all the time. Never leave it. All the time be with it. Always be in the past or the future. Always project. Always want to know more. And this is where the majority of us suffer. Now, we'll go into the past. Right? And we'll open the door turn on the light to the great hole and we'll we'll pick out some movies some books and pictures so these are all concerning our life right this one or others and we'll go sit in an easy chair and there'll, there'll be like a, a big white rectangle canvas floating and we'll watch some of the movies and you know, read some of the books and, and uh, look at some of the pictures. And reminisce and talk to ourselves about, you know, I remember this time and it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind doing it again. This time I tried this and it didn't work out, but I believe if I tried a different way next time it will work out. So see, we, just for ourselves, we interact with uh, different occurrences that are, that we review. But we don't stay there. We we will take everything, put it back in its proper place, turn off the light, shut the door, and move forward in the light. And on occasion, we'll revisit. Some of us, however, unconsciously, will stay there so darn long then we end up taking that past, bringing it into a future that doesn't exist, create that future from that past, and relive that past in that future. And this is why a lot of us will say, no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, we all go into the future. But you got that ego mind polish, poking you, pushing you, you know. You ever had, uh, you know, whenever you were a kid or something, did you have ever had someone use a broom and push you? You know, take that broom and push you on the rear end and push you. Get going, get going. Kind of like that, the ego mind is pushing you, prodding you. And you've got to, got to know this stuff. You, you know, come on, we got to know this. So you'll take the tomorrow path, uh, the future path, and, we look for answers. We look for, you know, external authorities. There's people to give us information. And there's a, there's a plethora of it uh, in the future and, to, and tomorrow because you have numerologists, astrologers, psychics, clairvoyants. You've got um, card readers, key leaf readers, palm readers candelum readers, crystal readers. I mean, it's a plethora of people. And we, we go ask and say, you know, I'd like, I, I got to ask you a question, and that is, when am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? This is a pretty prevalent question. Presented in different ways, but it's all the same. And so the reader will give their reading to you. They might say, well, 
uh, you you're going to come into a windfall within the next few weeks, right? And it's going to be totally unexpected, and it is going to be massive. Well, everybody had a, <coughs> excuse me. Everybody had a different response to that. For per, first person might have just done it for fun, has no belief or trust in any of it whatsoever. Blows it off. Second person will just, I mean, grab onto it. You know, put it in calendar. They're counting the days and constantly focused on it. And, what they're going to do as far as how things are going to be with the outcome of it and the impact and the attachments of it and then uh, the expectations that are formed. And so I took line of thinking. The third person will take it and embrace it. And it'll be, uh, they'll, they have total trust in the universe themselves, not through the heart mind, mind you. And they want to make sure that it's as clear as possible to the universe, right? So they'll take it and they'll clarify it. They need to. And they let it go because they know the universe is already beginning to manifest it for them. And they let it, they just, that's it. They'll manifest it. The others, uh, once in a blue moon. And, and the interesting thing about this, and we've heard about it for years and years and years, generations and generations, right? All different kinds of approaches, all different kinds of philosophies. It boils down to one thing. If it is to be, it is up to be. Period. Through it all, it all comes down. If it is to be, it is up to be. You want to manifest something, you learn how to do it properly and correctly, and you will manifest it every single time. If you are not aware or mindful of your thoughts, you'll also manifest that which you don't want. This is so crucial for this civilization to really, truly embrace the understanding deep within them that they are master manifestors. They create any kind of life they want. They can create any kind of, of, of uh, wealth they want. It's, but most don't know how. And they don't have the confidence through the heart-mind to perform it. And many believe that it is separate from them. It's separate from me. They, they say they can't. Can't, they can't have wealth because it's separate from them. They were given a different life, and that's just the way it is. And that's crap. Everybody deserves the best of everything. Period. Now, we all know that we are part. We have parts of ourselves. We have uh, parts of the gods that we are that are stone cold asleep. We've got parts of the guys that we are that are awake, consciously aware, meaning that they know that they are of and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Now, the ones that are asleep, they'll wake in their own time. We deeply love them just as much as we deeply love the parts of ourselves that are awake. And the real kicker here is, is that we've been so, it's been so ingrained in us that we are separate. But, of course, we take on that. We believe it. And it's a lie. We, we are literally part of everything, and everything's part of us. All species, all civilizations, all planetary systems, supernovas, brown dwarfs, planets, you name it, all one. All the universes, one. 
everything one. We see, the illusion of separation through the ego mind keeps everybody living in the past or the future. And the very thing that they truly are is discovered through the now. And that's the very thing that they keep skipping over. You could go through the whole list. You go through the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. You could go through ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Medantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, beneath earth, all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body and hold pure consciousness God for them. Okay. All Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Felines, Zeta Reticuli, Nords, Greys, Anunnaki, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, Fairy Sprites, Elves, Gnomes, Dwarves, Trees, Trolls, Elementals, Earth, Air, Water, Fire, Ether, Wood, the Mermaid, the Dolphin, the Whale, the Pegasus, the Unicorn, the Centaur, the Minotaur. One. One. Just housing different physical forms. When this civilization comes to the full understanding that it is one. Watch what happens. And some people are starting, just beginning, to realize and start sensing that they are one. That it's beginning to disintegrate the veil of deception of separation that more and more people are beginning to realize that they are one. That we're all one. And there is no separation. There never has been. There never will be. Now, we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. We're not in the ego mind. We form a super bright white fire ring of light around, circle of light around the equator of this planet, Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now. The gods that we are in these bodies. It emanates from us, the gods. It is pure, deep, eternal love. It is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequencies. And we're saturating, flooding, permeating this planet, all life, highest supreme value in the universe. Infinity and beyond. You see, there's no escape from any lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, period. They're all being vaporized into non-existence. Now, we're, we, we ascend, as we ascend above the planet, we find ourselves part of this massive ocean of glitter. And it isn't separation. And this ocean of glitter isn't anything like we would see on this planet. It is vibrant, super clear and sharp. It almost has a new dimension to it. The colors, the vibrancy of the colors is way beyond anything we've ever seen on this planet. And of course, we are it. We explore the reflective points, which is all of us. We enter those reflective points and we discover that, wait a minute here, this, we are learning from each other, parts of ourselves.
Would it make sense that if you, when you meet somebody that they're the opposite of you? Ooh, that'd be scary, wouldn't it? And then that way they would teach you all kinds of new things because they were, they, they, you know, most people will pick people that say, well, we, we, we like the same things and we eat the same things and we do the same things and it's so fun and easy and wonderful. But can you imagine when you would meet somebody and they were the opposite of you? And therefore they taught you many different things that you normally would not learn had you would have paired up with someone excuse me, that was a lot like you. Now, obviously, do we do that? No. We gravitate towards the safety and the, the harbor of someone that has a lot of things that we have in common with each other, so it's easier, more comfortable, right? Not as challenging. But in reality, we should be seeking those that are the opposite of us so that we can learn a whole new avenue about us. But most people won't dare go there because it's too much of the unknown. Well, what if this? And what if that? What if this and that? What if this happens? What if that happens? So you'll learn. You'll learn as long as you stay in the heart-mind. So many different things about yourself. You'll learn from other gods inhabiting other physical forms on a daily basis. It's endless. It's infinity and beyond. Learn from trees, bushes, grass, clouds, birds, dogs, cats, horses, cows. We learn. Now, we create light sources, right? We create, uh, we remember we've got a little bit of amnesia, so we're constantly reminding ourselves of gods that we are. So we're met with uh, Archangel Raphael carrying an omnipotent and powerful uh, emerald green flaming healing light. This reminds us, the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the power of healing these bodies. We just haven't quite gotten there yet with that. Archangel Michael comes by. He's carrying a violet, blue, purple, flaming light. And this reminds us, the gods that we are in these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We're then met by a white firelight. We created this light to remind us all that we are imbued from head to toe, inside and out, with a white fire armor. This armor emanates from the gods that we are in these bodies. It is impenetrable. It is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. So lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, pure evil, rogue AI, uh, souls who have taken in too much darkness can't come near us or they will vaporize, lose their form. As long as we maintain that frequency, we are protected 24-7. But only you, 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 have the power. It is you decide consciously or unconsciously to lower your vibrational frequency through hatred, anger, fear, greed, revenge, manipulation, dishonesty, hurriedness, worry, stress, fear, you'll create a breach in your white fire armor, allowing all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. And there's a lot of possibilities of, of attachment, possession, and so on and so forth. You do decide to do this, we have fail-safes. First one is a double column of light. First part of the column is a purple transmuting flame. This reminds us to bring in the purple transmuting flame. Transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralite substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. Then we have the second part of the column of light, the violet ray. 
This reminds us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. Cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were. Sealing the breach in our white fire armor. Restoring our vibrational harmony. To the highest of the highest high. Deepest of the deepest deepest. Purest of the purest purest. Eternal love. Gratitude. Peace. Then we come in contact with a golden white pink light. This is a column of light. We, the gods within these bodies, created to remind us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain, the rainbow. We are the sunsets and the sunrises, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, clouds in the sky, trees in the forest, soils, animals, everything. We're everything. Everything is us. Now, since we've been trained so long, we're trained in the ego mind, so we would look at a sunset and say, isn't that beautiful? But it is because it's you, the God that you are. Through the heart mind and the journey within, we look at it from a whole different perspective, that that's the God that I am. And this is, this is through the heart mind. So everywhere we go, everywhere we look, we know that that's the God that, that I am. Now, we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us who are carrying physical form decide to step outside the physical form and hover effortlessly above it. And the reason we do this is because, number one, we can, and number two, it's very fun. We come into full contact with a massive crystal light tower. We, the gods in these bodies, created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the column is this massive oblong sphere. The center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. It, in turn, is surrounded by numerous colored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This creates a super bright white misty cloud. <coughs> Excuse me. It in turn is absorbed through our heart mind, which actually feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, peace, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. And this is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, at the top of this column, we designed it to the golden ocean and come cascading down 360 degrees, infinity and beyond. What is the golden ocean? Pure, deep, eternal love. All of us are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drops, drops in the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. Now we see our meditative sphere. We, the gods in these bodies, created this sphere over four years ago. This sphere is holding nearing 1,900 meditations in perpetual motion, growing, expanding, and intensifying. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world and beyond, consciously aware, 
focus on the complete liberation of this planet from all pure evil. And we've been doing that for over four years, every day, seven days a week. The intent alone, it cannot be measured. This fear can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify, expand, and grow. Now you can you can literally check in through the heart, mind, through the breath, as a, as a watcher, and you literally can watch as things transpire. That we created the gods that we are created this atmosphere of a golden white, pink, shimmering light atmosphere, and the, and the cloud formation above the sky. This super bright, golden white, pink light. In fact, this light is so bright, it grays out the darkness of sacred space. And not only that, you could have a trillion suns bunched together and they wouldn't even come close to the brilliance of this light. It's pure, deep, eternal love. And so you can see on this planet all the dark matter floating off. It looks like it's being vacuumed off. Rogue AI, uh, you know, too, uh, uh, souls that have taken in too much darkness. And it's, it's being eliminated. It's being vacuumed off the planet everywhere. And you see it as it hits this golden white pink atmosphere. It just flashes away. It disintegrates. If it does make it to the sky, one final flash, and it is completely non-existent. This is ongoing. This isn't a temporary burst for a few years. This will continue to increase the vibrational frequency of this planet, which in turn infects all that there is. And just remember, we will not, we will not stay in fifth dimension. We will continue to progress seventh and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth and tenth and eleventh and twelfth and thirteenth and fourteenth and fifteenth. It'll just keep expanding and progressing. And eventually, this civilization will begin to discover that it is one. Start your day with, with the simple practice of relaxing your body from head to toe. The more your body relaxes, the more your mind will be at ease, and the greater the inner peace will be. After your body is relaxed, bring your mind to stillness by visualizing a large, beautiful, calm lake that is as smooth as glass. Let your mind merge with the water, however long it takes to reach this quiet stillness. Keep sitting until your mind drowns in the complete stillness of the lake. When you get a good dose of stillness, you will see you have full access to the highest universal power and intelligence available in this universe, I'll join you in the meditation, return to close sound.
take an easy, slow breath in through the nose and an easy, slow breath out of the mouth. Be still. The basic struggle of life is its essential nature. Its essential nature is divine. Respect the struggle and it will relax. When you will see the real beauty of your being, notice today that it is that you are continuously struggling against. Take three minutes and let go of any agenda you have that is causing any sort of internal battle. No matter how important it seems, explore what it feels like for a few moments to, to be free from it. Releasing is an absolutely effortless process. There is no efforting to letting go. Just let the intention be to be released the struggle and the universe handle the detail. Take this with you for the rest of the day and evening and night, the following morning. We'll return here Friday, July 22nd, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern for to continue our Global Guided Meditation call, and 9 p.m. Eastern for our Reverse Aging Health call.